CEO Cameron George joins us. Cameron, welcome back to the show. Look, it's a big game for us on the pitch. It's it's one that we want to win, but um, to do that in front of you know what will be twenty six odd thousand people, um, you know, is a is a really special occasion for our footy club uh, to celebrate. But we've got a big job at hand to take on the bunnies. But uh, looking forward to it. While we're talking. This nutso Auckland weather, there's sun shining about 10 minutes ago. It was pouring with rain. It doesn't look great forecast-wise tonight, but I don't think that's going to stop the crowd turning up. No, no, nor should it, mate. Rug up, come and have a beer. Go on. Uh, get, in the, get, in the, get in the stand, uh, get beside your mates and uh, family and, and cheer loud, mate. You'll keep warm, but look, it's the weather. You know, we know we can't control that. Uh, it's our mindset. We've just got to get on with it. So that's the job at hand and uh, looking forward to having a big crowd there. Cameron, you put up the sold-out signs a week ago. How good does that feel as a CEO when that happens? Yeah, it's great. Uh, but it's a reflection of the hard work from the club um, across the board, from our community foundation right through to our playing group and staff right through the organisation. Everyone has a, play to, a role to play and um, I'm just so proud for our fans that our, our boys are doing their job and um, the organisation is doing their best and our fans are, are really enjoying that. So um, you know, they've been starved for a long time and things like this, it, it makes you proud, but we've got a job to do and we're not forgetting what that our role is in that and uh, we've got to finish off the year the best we can. You know, a year ago, I gave you a big spray. Things were going terrible. A year, a year ago, mate. A year, a year ago, the team was four and eleven at this time. Now we're nine and six. And I wanted to get you on because I think, look, it's easy to be a critic when times are tough, but when times are going well and the club has improved, and everyone points to Andrew Webster and says, "Yes, Webby's come along and he's made enormous changes." But I think credit where credit is due because it feels like the organisation has changed, and that's what I wanted to ask you about. What are you doing differently a year later, or has it changed? You tell me. Yeah, mate, it has. We we, we had the opportunity, Martin, and your spray had some merit to it. I, I get that. Um, you know, like we were in a pretty dark place, and a lot of people in, in the community were with what was going on. But um, you know, we had we had people playing for us that uh, and working for us that were just there because of COVID, because we we're stuck in Australia. But they didn't really buy into the. The, you know, the warrior culture, and we lost our identity. That's my fault. I let it slip through our hands while we're away. Um, so I, I seize the opportunity coming back to make sure we didn't miss it to reset our organisation, and we did so through a number of initiatives, which I'll take you through another time. But everyone got on board from players to staff, and we had a big session at the start of the year. We washed away the, you know, the, the COVID experience and we accept that it's part of our history and our future's in our hands. But we created our identity and we are now living by it day in, day out. And, um, you know, from Webby to players to staff in the back room uh, to the community foundation, we all live by what we stand for as a warrior. And um, that's something we reset this year and reintroduced. And, I'm just driving the environment. Everyone's doing a lot of hard work, and I'm only one part of the whole team. So credit to all the staff and the players. We had Tohu on the program uh, during the week, and I asked him that question, and I said, look, I don't want to revisit it too much, but I played him a quote of Stacey when Stacey was sitting there saying how disappointed he was with the team. And Tohu said exactly what you've just said. He said, listen, he said at the start of the year, we, 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 we actually acknowledged that. We accepted it. We looked back at it, and we said it ain't going to happen again, and we shut the door on it. And I was so pleased to hear that because... Because you can't go forward without first actually looking at that wart and going, mm, okay, I've got to treat that bugger, don't I? Yeah, that's right. Like, mate, I'm not one for sports psychs and academic approaches and all that sort of thing. Trust me, uh, we don't do that at the Warriors. But um, I, I, I tracked down uh, through the advice of some really good sporting minds and tracked down a really good operator um, to come and do a session. We tailored it, we tailored it to what we've experienced and. We did a big, I'm just going to use my words here, we did a big wash out session of the, of the COVID experience. And, and we, we did it for four or five hours at the ground one day and um, at Mount Smart and, and every player and every staff member was involved. But what we learned from it when we peeled back all the shit times was actually there was a lot of positive in there that we weren't seeing. Um, and then we really amplified those positive experiences and every player and everyone, we, we were actually really surprised at some of the really good stuff we got out of it and mate we, we just really addressed it and threw it in the bin all the bad stuff and grabbed hold of some of the good stuff 
put everyone and connected everyone back with our families, our, our, our fans and our home base. And it's just really gelled into a, a really strong belief in that, you know, stuff everyone else. Uh, this is our time now and um, let's go after it. And you mix that in with good staff and good players and our fans are enjoying the outcome. So it, it's, it's, it's great for everyone involved in our footy club media right through to fans. Cameron George, CEO of the Warriors, is with us tonight. Full house for the Rabbits. One more thing on this, um, and I've kept quotes from Chance, from Marcelo, from from Torhu, and these guys are talking honestly about how, what a buzz they get when they walk in that door. They see the murals, they want to come to work, they want to come to training and that. That must be music to your ears. I know it's just not the players as well, it's the other staff, but how much, you know I mean, it's just that, that vibe is infectious, isn't it? It is, and it's crucial. Uh, but, you know, we got rid of our leadership group this year uh, from the playing ranks and we've broken down some other structures in the organisation. Um, so it, it's really enabled everyone to have a voice and it's really enabled everyone to be a leader. Um, one of our key and crucial behaviours we, we expect day in, day out is, is um, you know, uh, feedback. And um, that's something that it's not necessarily receiving it. It's about giving it. And that's what we really drive is that everyone has an environment where they're comfortable enough to give it. Uh, people are happy enough to receive it. And we get on with it because it's not personal. It's about getting better. And what it's done is everyone's positive. Everyone's pumping. Everyone's jumping. Because uh, we really want to do this brand proud and our fans proud this year because they deserve it. Um, so we've got a long way to go, though. Mate. I know. Please I know. don't think we're, we're sitting on our hands. We have a long way to go, but we're going after it. Look, I know that you will be aware of all the talk. Oh, the Warriors have taken over the town. It's a league town, all that stuff now. I don't know whether you buy into it all, but it must be actually just, it must be good to hear after the last couple of years just to see the crowds, the sellout signs, all of that. Does it make your job easier? It does, uh, without a doubt. Um, it, it's great that everyone's buying into the experience. We're really focused on filling our ground this year as much as we can. Over and beyond the, the price of the tickets, you know, we're, we're, we're really marketing ourselves to attract everybody. Uh, and there's something for everyone. Um, you know, I was just got off the phone then. We released 600 tickets last night of additional seating that, were, that was put in the stadium this week. They were snapped up. Um, so people buying as late as this morning and last night just to grab those last seats. Um, and talking about rugby league being, you know, the talk of the town, um, 21 All Blacks are coming tonight. Uh, they Brilliant. reached out and got Brilliant. tickets. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of rugby league fans there. So, you know, um, it, it's it's sport. It's an event and something we're proud to be about. Um, and we just want to represent New Zealand the best way we can, uh, doing the Kiwi thing. And that's knocking off our Aussie counterparts wherever we, whenever we can. One little side subject, this week Auckland Rugby League say they've done a deal, a pathways and development deal with Manly and other NRL clubs, but uh, but not with the Warriors. Where do you where do you sit with this? Do you, you know, because it kind of just on the surface when you hear a story like that, you think, why the hell aren't Auckland Rugby League who used to be a part owner of the Warriors? Why aren't they why why aren't they kind of in some kind of synergy with you with you guys? Mate, mate, it's disappointing. It's for me it just flies in the face what your what, what your organization is supposed to do and that's retain talent and develop and grow talent within New Zealand and enhance the quality of competitions and basically doing deals with NRL clubs based in Australia, all you're doing is opening up the door. We provided the Auckland Rugby League a proposal back in October of last year after discussions in July. Um, look, it wasn't presented to the clubs at a, at a club day. Uh, we later withdrew the proposal because we went and did something different because we weren't hearing back. Um, when he did something different with PAC to help out the kids. But I mean, like to go and do deals with, you know, Manly and the likes, um, you know, good on Manly, good on the other clubs. But all it's doing is, is opening up the door for these kids to go offshore. Um, and that's not what governing bodies in New Zealand should be doing, regardless of the sport. We should be trying to retain the talent. We've got six teams in the competition next year with great pathways. You know, work with us. We, if we win the competition, Martin, Rugby league will explode in this country. Oh, well, if, yeah. if, well. if Manly win the competition, it won't have an impact on the comp on, on rugby league in this country. If the Roosters win the comp, it won't have an impact on the rugby league um, in this country. But if we win it, it'll explode. That's our job. We're trying to do that in the, sh in the retail shop front. You know, Auckland Rugby League to go and 
do things like this, and they're having discussions with other clubs, that's their call. But I, I truly don't think it's the right thing for rugby league's future. I don't believe it works in line with what New Zealand Rugby League is all about. Uh, we work closely with NZRL. We're trying to do things with them. But to read that and hear that, it's extremely disappointing on our part because all it does is send kids offshore that could be representing the Warriors and further, furthermore, and most importantly, the Kiwis. Mm, I felt exactly the same way. That's why I wanted to bring it up. All right. Well, look, all the very best. As I said, I know that this, you know, the season hasn't stopped. It hasn't. You know, it's just we're just at a place now where expectations have grown because of the performance of this team, and I think that's fantastic. And as Tohu said the other day to us, he said, "Mate, we're embracing it. We're enjoying the moment. We're embracing it, but we know all the hard work is still to come." So, all the very best for the rest of the season. I really appreciate catching up with you. Thanks, mate. Good on you. Have a good day.